Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us here at the brand new Mariano Rancho Preserve in beautiful Ventura, California. It's wonderful to see so many smiling faces, so many longtime supporters, some new supporters, uh, our staff, our board, a uh, number of different people here, our elected leaders. Uh, we're really excited uh, to welcome all of you here today to this amazing spot. And how about this view? Right? Absolutely incredible. We are so excited to get to gift this um, to the people of our region and have them uh, enjoy this for many generations to come. Uh, my name is Melissa Baffa. I'm the Executive Director of the Ventura Land Trust. And um, I want to thank you for joining us to recognize the conservation of this amazing preserve, the Mariano Rancho Preserve, brought about in part, brought about in part with the support of Assembly Member Steve Bennett and Senator Monique Lamone. When Ventura Land Trust purchased this property in 2020, we came full, re, for, full circle sorry, um, to the reason that VLT, which was then called the Ventura Hillsides Conservancy, was founded in 2003 to protect Ventura's iconic hillsides. We are here today to recognize the efforts of the many individuals who laid the groundwork for the conservation of the Mariano Rancho Preserve, those who made their voices heard in the political process to save this land, those who kept hope alive year after year with the Ventura Hillsides Music Festivals, and yes, big round of applause, a lot of sore backs earned with those, and those who guided us to where we are now. An award of $7.2 million from the state of California directed to Ventura Land Trust by Assemblymember Bennett and Senator Limon is nothing short of a game changer for Ventura Land Trust. With this funding, we will be able to fully pay off the loan taken to purchase Mariano Rancho Preserve and have the capital funds needed to open the preserve to the public for hiking, cycling, and enjoying these incredible views. Before we go any further, I want to acknowledge that we stand on the traditional lands of the Chumash people. We pay respect to the Chumash people, past and present, and honor their stewardship of this land throughout the generations. This calls us to learn how to be better stewards of the land we protect on behalf of our community members, current and future, and our wildlife neighbors. Matthew Vestudo of the Barbareño Venturaño Band of Mission Indians will offer a blessing and assist us with acknowledging Chumash traditions and culture that guide our stewardship of Mariano Rancho Preserve. Matthew. Sorry to change your uh, program, Melissa, but I'm going to defer to Radel Van Huelos <laughs> for the blessing. Haku, haku. Hello, hello to all. This is a very special day today when us, the original keepers of the land, meet and confer and talk with other keepers of the land. This is, this is good medicine. This is something that uh, we have a common trait that uh, we are both keepers of the land and, and it's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult for us and I'm sure just the processes and, and like she was mentioning, you know, the different people working on it and uh, at times the headbutting that goes along with doing what you do. And we honor you because from day one, we've always been keepers of the land and trusting in the land. And today we give honor to Hutash, the Earth Mother, and respect because we all on this land together. We all need to work together to foster good medicine on this land. And there's not enough of us to do it. So anytime we, uh, we can collaborate, that we can build a relationship, especially building relationships is huge for us and others. So with that, we thank the Creator today for allowing us all to gather here at this special place behind us, this view. Uh, I'm direct descendant of Limu, Santa Cruz Island, so I, that whole special and that view right now is just spectacular. And so with that, 
I'd like to thank everybody, thank all for your tenacity, your will to be protectors of the land. We thank you and we honor you. Typically, just want to say this, typically we burn sage for this occasion, but just where we are, and I don't want to read in tomorrow's paper. <laughs> um, so just a little, um, we're with you in spirit. This sage is, is definitely a vessel absorbing all this positive medicine. And later on, I will burn this in honor. Uh, but right now, no. <laughs> Thank you. Next up, I would like to welcome the Board of uh, Trustees President, Mark Watkins. Well, welcome. Thank you all for being here. Uh, what a day this is. Uh, I'm so pleased to be able to welcome everybody on behalf of the Board of Trustees for the Ventura Land Trust. They say that it takes about 20 years to become an overnight sensation. And that is where we are right now. It is such an exciting time for this organization. Uh, next year, we do celebrate our 20th anniversary, and it takes a long time to start a corporation, to start a nonprofit, a lot of effort. And there's people here who have been here from the beginning, who were there when we first organized. There's people who have come to us later, but the community support that we have at this stage is just unreal. Quick story just about Moriano. So we're a small local nonprofit. Um, a couple years ago, we only had maybe 100 acres of land mostly in the river bottom, but we were proving ourselves. We were showing that we could clean that land up, that we could steward the land, we could care for the land. And then we were able to open Harmon Canyon, and we were able to show that we can open uh, lands to the public and still manage them well and take care of those lands. And we've established our credibility by doing those things. And then this piece of land came up for sale, but there wasn't time to fundraise, there wasn't time to figure out how to acquire it like there was with Harmon. And so we had to take out a loan. So we went to the banks as a small little local nonprofit. And as an organization, we took a risk. And it was a big risk for us. It was a big loan for a small group. But we knew we'd have the community support. We knew that we'd have all your support. And today is proof of that. And, and it really shows that by establishing our credibility, by working for those 20 years as hard as everybody has worked to establish this organization. It has positioned us to be able to do some great things in this community. And this is kind of the culmination of that. So I have to offer my thanks also to Assembly Member Steve Bennett for shepherding this through, for State Senator Monique Lamone, uh, for having the faith and trust and confidence in us. And we can promise them and all of you that we will make good use of that 7.2 million and that we will make it so that we can be good neighbors, we can do the right thing uh, for now and forever and keep these lands open. Uh, so everyone can enjoy them, which they haven't been able to do in the past. So it's a special treat for us. It's an honor to be here. Um, we know we've got the entire community standing behind us, um, and we couldn't be more proud of that. And so with that, I will introduce the mayor of the great city of San Buenaventura, Sofia Rubalcaba. Sofia. What a beautiful day to be out here, isn't it? I mean, we couldn't have chosen a better day and better weather. I just want to thank the organizers, all of the guests and supporters who are here with us today. And I want to give a special thanks to Ventura Land Trust, all of its staff members, its leadership, the board. I mean, talk about an organization that gets it done. Just a few months ago, we were at the ribbon cutting for Harmon Canyon, and now we are here for Mariano Ranch. And so great things are happening because Ventura Land Trust is working really hard. The hills that we are standing on have a long history as Shumash lands, as working lands, and as lands that have long stood behind locked gates. Thanks to the support of Assembly Member Bennett and Senator Limon, the hills of Mariano Ranch Preserve will now represent Ventura's commitment and leadership in the conservation of open spaces. Soon the gates to Ventura's backyard will open for Ventura residents and visitors to explore these hills for the first time in generations. Mariano Ranch Preserve is an important connector for plant and wildlife habitat, but is it, it is even more than that. It is a connector for people it will connect Ventura Avenue neighborhoods to open space. It will connect to Grant Park and Ventura Botanical Gardens. 
It will connect schools and families, and it will deepen the connection between the city of Ventura and the scenic beauty we treasure. And as a resident of the West Side, I just want to say that this is such an exciting opportunity for all of our residents, but especially for those of us that are here right next door, because for so many years, these lands were private property and they were closed to the public. And if children or teenagers wanted to come up and hike, they were trespassing. So with this, we are now decriminalizing the enjoyment of open spaces. Just think about how powerful that is. And so that's why I am super excited about this and lend my full support with the upcoming work because there is upcoming work. So make sure that you all sign up to be volunteers and to help make this a reality. But we just want to lend our support from the city of Ventura and the city council. We want, to, our, we want to lend our support to make sure that this dream becomes a reality pretty soon. Thank you. And with that, I will now introduce the president and CEO of Visit Ventura, Marlis Oster. Thank you, Mayor Rubicaza. Well, welcome. I couldn't help but be totally taken back during your blessing. You had two hawks swarming above you and it was such a beautiful sight to see and us be here to enjoy this and we know Ventura is a very special place not only by its natural beauty but by the people that make it shine even more the community that brings it together sorry I'm a little too short for it <laughs> there's so much to be explored and experienced here in Ventura so we're fortunate to be surrounded by all this nature. I mean, the ocean to these very hills and how exciting it is to think about what is ahead so that we can watch Mariano Rancho Preserve come alive. That we'll see years from now what it's supposed to be with the nature here. So thank you to all of you who are putting forth so much efforts to make that happen. When the preserve opens to the public, that'll draw visitors um, and residents to hike, to bike, to really cruise the paths that are made with such love, and then go into a town and spend money at our local businesses, those that invest in our city, stay in our hotels, be part of our community, and spend money here so that we as residents enjoy the fruits of that and can enjoy our PD and fire and our streets and everything that's healthy for our community to be sustainable and alive. Um, so in open spaces like Mariano Rancho Preserve, visitors can connect with themselves. They can be uh, provided opportunities for cultivating a sense of well-being, for sharing experiences, sharing resources, and really creating a stronger community. I will say, um, anytime I talk about Ventura, I don't talk about just the assets that we have. We've got great beaches, we've got great hillsides, we have wonderful open spaces, but it is the people and the people that care for our land that really makes us different than any other coastal city along the California coast. So right after this event, I'm actually traveling um, to San Francisco with the state of California. We sent a proposal to them to join a media event in San Francisco. And we were selected, only a few cities were selected to represent the state. And we were, but one of our pitch decks included open spaces. And we told the story of what Ventura Land Trust is doing, what Harmon Canyon is for our community and visitors. And I can't wait to tell them about what's to come with Mariano, Mariano Rancho Preserve. Like, I'm beaming with excitement to just tell them what's, what's to come and how they'll be able to enjoy this. So thank you for asking me to be a part of this. I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. My son is too, hopefully. He's uh, a senior at UCSB for environmental studies. You are all making it great for our children and their children. So we thank you and I so appreciate being part of this event. And with that, um, I would like to introduce um, the Ventura Land trustee and who has a wealth of experience and vision for what's to come, uh, Russell Gallipo. Did I say that right? Yes, thank you. I'll go back to a little height. Thank you, Marlis, and uh, thank you for all the previous words. 
well said, great blessing. And I'm glad to see that we can take on that stewardship that you once held all to your own. Now we will try and, and do a, as good a job if we can, so thank you. So for the last 40 years, I've been in the, the game of conservation as a public servant. 40 years of trying to protect your heritage, your national parks. The last 15 out here at Channel Islands National Park, where I, I ended my career and retired. But now I decided to join a, a different approach. Because what I have realized, and, and we've heard this from um, Steve Bennett before, is if we really want to protect these places, we're going to have to rely on private landowners. And we, the, Vet, the Ventura Land Trust, are now one of those private landowners who are looking after your interest, this sense of place. What makes this place so important? We can no longer expect the state and the federal government to protect and preserve what we value. We as a community need to take the reins to define our community, our sense of place, a place that includes you and me and our natural residents, a community where we see land as a place where we belong, not a place that we dominate. By investing in this more robust sense of community, we better preserve this place, our home, which we call Ventura County. The acquisition of the 1,645 acres of the Mariano Rancho Reserve or Preserve is more than just open space that we've preserved. Sure, it looks barren. I mean, I look at it as an ecologist and I see it's barren. It's bruised, it's been battered. But it contains remnants of a coastal sage scrub community. And it's this community, although it lacks that majestic views of the redwood forest or an oak forest, when you take that closer look at that coastal sage scrub community, what you see is a bouquet of senses. It's an ecosystem known for its fragrance, fragrances. It's known for its textures. It's known for its colors. And it's known for its spectacular biological diversity. It is this ecosystem that contains the largest concentration of rare species, more than any other California terrestrial ecosystem. But you also know because of its rarity, it contains some of the most endangered communities. But that gives us an opportunity to change that. We as citizens of Ventura can say, we'll play a role in protecting this ecosystem. We'll keep this ecosystem viable in California. The Ventura Land Trust plays a vital role in bringing this ecosystem back as a resilient community. We as a community recognize the importance of open space. But open space without intact ecosystems, without restored habitats, without assemblages of all of its parts, or without connected parcels to allow for the unfettered movement of species is just that, open space. What makes this place special is the Mariano Rancho Preserve provides us with this opportunity to restore endangered ecosystems, a chance to contribute to ecosystem health and resiliency. And when we restore ecosystem health and resiliency, we restore our community our community's health, and our community's resiliency. Every action we take to set aside land and restore it to its natural ecosystem function is an investment in clean air and clean water. The $7.2 million award from the state of California is more than just an investment in the future of the preserve. It's an investment in the future of Ventura's environmental health, which means an investment in our health. Mariano Rancho Preserve as a private land trust, we can ensure the preservation of this land and make sure it's protected for future generations. So let me conclude with a few thoughts. Mariano Rancho Preserve is a living laboratory, is a place where we learn about the land as we interact with the land. Mariano Rancho Preserve is a critical part of our community where we see land as a place where we belong and Mariano Rancho Preserve, where we as a community reflect our values on how we manage our lands and our natural neighbors to mutually benefit from one another. Mariano Rancho Preserve serves as a place in our community where all of its inhabitants can call home, a place where we can recreate, we can educate, and a place where we can recreate the functions of the coastal sage scrub ecosystem. 
A functioning ecosystem not only provides tangible benefits, but those intangible ecosystems, ecosystem services that we depend on. So with that, I will relinquish the lectern and hand it over to the board president of the Ventura Citizens for Hillside Preservation, Diane Underhill. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'm Diane Underhill and uh, the president of Ventura Citizens for Hillside Preservation. I also might refer to us as VCHP. Um, my board wanted me to say right up front that um, Assembly Member Bennett and um, Senator Lumon, you're our heroes. Um, it's great to be here among all these um, familiar faces to celebrate this landmark achievement for the land, uh, Ventura Land Trust. Our VCHP group has long been committed to saving and preserving the Ventura hillsides with the goal of public non-damaging recreational access. We sought to preserve hillside open space, wildlife habitat, watershed, expansive views, and fragile ecosystems. Some of you have been here through the long fight, and some of you, thank goodness, um, have brought fresh energy to this fight. Um, some of you know this and others might not, but the Ventura Land Trust, formerly the Ventura Hillsides Conservancy, and our group, the Ventura Citizens for Hillside Preservation, were all the same group back around 2000. Then we realized that instead of continually fighting hillside development projects, we needed to have a land conservancy organization to focus on acquiring the land to preserve it in perpetuity. I still remember the meeting when we had this epiphany. We tried to figure out who was best suited to fight development and who was best suited to form a conservancy to get on with the business of fundraising and acquiring this land. Um, like some kind of spontaneous mitosis, our single group divided into two equal cells of activists, now totally separate groups. Um, one to continue to politically advocate, advocate for hillside preservation and the other to form a land conservancy. Looking back and looking at what we are here today to celebrate, I think we each must have made the correct choice. A bit of history. All this began in 2001 when the Ventura hillsides were threatened with a massive development proposal. The project prompted to push, um, prompted a push to pass measure in 2001, a ballot measure to require a vote of the citizens of Ventura to extend city services into the hillside area. An unfortunate ex exception to this application is, um, or sorry, an unfortunate exception to the measure was the 215 acres of the Mariano Ranch property due to it already being within city limits. The voters of Ventura soundly rejected the development proposal on the 2002 ballot. The leaders of the Ventura Citizens for Hillside Preservation met with landowners and, and had then committed to forming a land trust and working toward the acquisition of different hillside properties. This commitment was met with the creation of the Ventura Hillsides Conservancy in 2003, which is now, of course, the Ventura Land Trust. In 2015, another threat emerged to, to develop the Mariano Ranch property into a large cut and fill project above Ventura High School. A new group, the Ventura Hillsides Neighbors, was formed to help in that fight, as well as, of course, SOAR and other existing groups. Um, Ventura's residents, committees, commissions, the city council stepped up to demand that development be compatible with the historic neighborhood below the planned development. The developer declined to accept the proposed design rules and walked away. As we know from 20 years of advocacy and hard work by the Ventura Land Trust, it takes years of toil um, for an or to raise an organization's profile um, and get the donations, raise funds, and restore the land. As um, if the Ventura Land Trust reached this milestone in conservation with the support and uh, hard work of hundreds of individuals, businesses, and conservation partners, small successes lead to larger successes and finally to massive successes like we have here today until um, 
until until we we are here today and we get to thank our wonderful elected representatives and Ventura Land Trust for being able to acquire the Mar Mariano Rancho the last large section of available land directly above the city um, in the Ventura hillsides. In support of Ventura Land Trust's commitment to acquire the Mariano Ranch parcels in 2022, our VCHP group committed $10,000 towards the conservation of this preserve. Um, VLTs and VCHPs and all the other nonprofits soar the uh, Ventura neighbors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, fought the good fight to preserve these hillsides, um, and it brings to mind a favorite quote by U.S. anthropologist Margaret Mead, and I'm sure you've heard this, but I just love this quote: "Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has." To everyone here, I say, great job. Enjoy this moment. You've all worked hard to get here. Congratulations. And with that, it is my extreme pleasure to um, yield the microphone to Senator Monique Limon, who um, among this group probably needs no introduction. Thank you so much. I definitely have a height adjustment. There we go. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's an honor to be here with all of you. Um, and I just have to start off by saying how special this place is. Uh, being up here, sitting, listening, um, and, and really seeing uh, the view is a reminder that not all communities have access uh, to special places like this, and not all communities uh, have a, a body of individuals, a team, um, a community at large who is willing uh, to say that this is here uh, for the future and that this preservation is meaningful to us. Um, I just got back from New York. Uh, I was at Climate Week, and we had a lot of discussions in New York about what's happening to Mother Earth and Father Sky and uh, how, how we ensure that we, we have a future where we're able to protect it. And for me, a land preservation, Mariano Rancho Preserve, is a place where we start. We start by building a relationship with our environment. And so often communities are deprived of that opportunity. And what we have here today is access to that opportunity. I like how our mayor uh, also put it and reminded us that we are decriminalizing that relationship that is built with the environment. We don't have this in all communities. And I can tell you this as I talk to global leaders and know that this is something that is meaningful, that it is special, but that it's needed in order to create what we want a future that understands what it means to preserve, a future that understands the land, a future that understands our reasons uh, beyond ourselves, but for our environment, for you know, uh, just the, the creatures that on earth that are here as well that share this space with us. And I know uh, that this is years in the making, as are so many things, right? It takes a lot of time uh, and, and sometimes uh, over coming obstacles, and I'm grateful to have partnered with, I think, an ultimate champion um, who you all know, uh, Assemblymember Bennett, on this uh, ask for, uh, for from our state for our community. Assemblymember Bennett has been at this, has a history of uh, ensuring that we have conservation, a history ensuring that we also create that relationship with the environment because our future relies on that relationship uh, to make this world turn. So I am honored to be here, honored to be a partner in this and cannot tell you how excited I am. Just as I keep looking, I also share that big smile of like, my goodness, this is going to one day be open to the public in a way that they will see what we have uh, in front of us and why we need to keep fighting uh, for our environment. So please help me in welcoming our biggest champion to this preserve and our champion for all things conservation and preserve and land and environment, Assemblymember Steve Bennett.
Thank you very much, uh, Senator Lamone. And uh, I'll say this early, but, um, you know, I have to do things in the Assembly. She has to do things in the Senate. Um, but I guarantee you Ventura County does not have a better partner for your assembly member that represents this area in the Senate than uh, Senator Lamone. It's just, it's been a wonderful relationship and it means a lot to me. It means even more to everybody here. And so that's a, a key way that we're able to deliver things. So thank you very much, really appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I think this is gonna blow away before I uh, get into this. Um, and it's probably okay because so many of you said a number of the things that I was going to say. Um, but uh, I was up here a few weeks ago in the preparation for this. But I was up where the land trust uh, tent is right now. This is the first time I've been right here at the edge. And uh, I have to tell you, I'm moved. I, I, I genuinely am moved because right here from the edge, unlike there, you can see all the people in what we call our community, including the avenue. You can see the avenue. You can see Main Street. You can see Midtown. You can see the East End all the way out there. This is our place. And we have been fighting for our place for a long time. And it has come full circle uh, for us here. And I want to emphasize first, what, are, what have we been fighting for? You, know, you can go to a number of places in California and you can be on the hills and you can look out at the ocean. But very few places can you look out at a horizon that has national park islands out there. It completely changes just that very first view, right, that you have. Because you see that broken versus that unbroken horizon on the ocean. And so I look at that, I think of an unparalleled, literally unparalleled view of the horizon matched with this ability to be right here at this spot, not up there at the tent, and see everything that links us together from the harbor to the avenue and, and, and all of that. And I am genuinely filled with gratitude and I think back to how did this happen? And so I think back to Diane Underhill and everybody here that worked on the campaign, the political campaign to stop this could have had 3,400 homes on it right now. Everybody that worked on that campaign, would you just put your hand up real quick? And then let's give those people a, a, a round of applause, right? If it wasn't for them, we would not have created the Ventura Land Trust, right? We wouldn't have created the Ventura Hillside Conservancy and, and uh, Ventura, Ventura for Hillside Preservation. So out of that effort then became the one organization for that effort that then, as Diane mentioned, split into the two organizations. And then I, I think that the, the one organization continued the political activity that we needed, but the other organization evolved and it evolved into an increasingly professional land trust. And I see Derek uh, back there, who I know did a number of things that I can't say, right? Because of the sensitivity. But he kept the hope that we could get this very property alive over and over again with some things that he did that were visionary and took courage to pull off at, at that point in time. And then the board of trustees, all of the people that gave up their time to be on the board, all of the volunteers that gave hope, that showed up at the Land Conservancy, et cetera, you evolved this organization into a professional organization that now has the expertise on the board, the, the executive leadership, it has the leadership of people with all of these various skills, National Park Ranger for the very islands that we appreciate, um, Mark Watson and his uh, leadership from, from the city, uh, and a professional staff uh, that we have. I just have to tell you, there are very few moments uh, in my political career where I have been as grateful as I am right now to so many people that allow us to be right here at this very edge and look out uh, and see all of that. So that's that's the major 
point that I think I wanted to emphasize here today. I, I will point out, uh, again, we were fortunate to get the $7.2 million out of the state's budget uh, for this. Um, part of what we were able to do is sell this as part of the state of California's effort to preserve 30% of our land as natural land uh, by 2030. Uh, and this is a significant piece of that. But when I was trying to sell this to the governor's office and sell this to the leadership, I said, this isn't just a normal piece of open space. You know, this is completely different. I mean, it, it was easy to have passion to point out how different it was, how it was going to link the, the low income people uh, on the avenue that have not had the access uh, that they should have had uh, to, to nature, uh, and how it was going to link our whole community together, how it was going to give us one more opportunity to link together as a community where we feel much more like this is our home it is not just a place and it is a community and it's something that links us together and so everybody everybody in ventura county and that's what i hope you guys will do in the future i've been done being grateful it's being hopeful um, that it, you will be able to tie the community together have everybody feel like this is where they belong whether they're disabled whether they're seniors uh, whether they're low-income families on the avenue that are stressed for time that this is a safe place and a good place and it's a, a righteous place for them to come and um, with that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, I was able to introduce and I have on the governor's desk, and I hope he signs it, a bill that recognizes the fact that during the pandemic, all of a sudden everybody started to increase their appreciation of being outdoors. And what we realized was we have underinvested under in the trails in the backcountry and the access that the people need to be able to get there. And so I tried to propose my bill to create, and I mentioned this to you when we were at the Harmon property, actually create a coastal commission com comparison to the coastal commission for the trails of California. Well, that was a little too ambitious for the people, uh, and we had to scale that back, uh, mostly because of the funding that it would take to, to create and support another agency. They said, do you want the money for the hillside preservation, or do you want the money to create this agency? And I said, we'll take this now, and we'll, we'll get the agency out of you later, right? Okay, um, in terms of trying to do that. But that bill now uh, does ensure that there will be an update to the plan, and it'll be reported to the legislature. Uh, regularly so that we don't do what we've done in the past which is just sort of easily kick down the road the maintenance of the trails and where should we make what are the most important investments for us to make uh, to be able to, to keep all of this uh, in, in good shape um, so again I am hopeful about what you're able to do I hope that this message and people that are able to watch it uh, out there uh, in the public will get involved when you start to have your stakeholder meetings and try to make sure this is the uh, the right place for everybody and I want to finish this. When I, I began, I said, you know, we've come full circle. And I don't mean we've come full circle since the political campaign where we tried to stop the development. I mean we've come full circle since the Chumash controlled this property. When you think about it, the Chumash didn't say this was private property and nobody can go up there, right? They didn't make it illegal like the mayor talked about in terms of uh, people that did come up here, came up here, uh, but had to break the law. This was everybody's property, and the Chumash and the Native Americans that came before us and that are the, were the original stewards of the land did a remarkable job of living in harmony with this ecosystem and with this nature, and they had that relationship um, that it was so importantly talked about by uh, Senator Lamone and by uh, uh, Mayor Rubicola. Uh, they, People had that relationship with the nature, and now we have gone full circle because although somebody would say legally it's the land trust, it's really all of our property. It's our public, it's our community property in perpetuity, and that is coming full circle. And if you can't feel good about being part of making that contribution to your community, 
I don't know what you could feel good about, but I have a feeling looking at Don's smile right there <laughs> that all of us and all of you should feel a real measure of pride for each one of you was, was a spike in pulling this together, it was, it was a step in making this happen. And I, you all know what you did, you should all stop and right now just really enjoy this special moment that we have up here. Uh, and I, I, I'll leave it with, you've got our community that we can see, you've got our islands that we can see, and you even have a few minutes ago, six vultures up there uh, that are so iconically representing uh, the, the view from up here that so many people are going to see. So thank you sincerely from everybody that can't be here. I want to represent the community and thank each one of you for taking all those special steps to make this happen. And with this, I'd like to call up the Land Trust and uh, Senator Lamone. Uh, and present this $7.2 million check to uh, the Ventura Land Trust, right? And why don't we get here, and there you go. All right. So I'll tell you what. You two guys get in the middle. Okay. And we'll get we, got, here. we got a bunch more board members here, too. All right. All, right. Yeah. All the board members. Everybody with the blue shirt. Everybody with the blue shirt. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody with the blue shirt. Come on up. Here we go. Hey, how are you? Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I really met it. Amanda, I'm Carol. Dan, you're in the back. I'm used to it. Gotta hustle, people. All right, all right. Oh, we got staff too. Fantastic. You're good. You look forward, John. How about this, right. though? Like one with, you shake Melissa's hand, and I'm going to shake Mark's hand. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. He's orchestrating. Very good. Thank you. What's his name? What's his name? Yes. All right. Congratulations. Hey. hey. All right, we are almost ready to send you back down the hill. <sighs> wow, so what an incredible day. What an incredible opportunity to get together with friends, supporters, staff, trustees, our electeds. Again, another shout out, really big shout out to our former executive director, Derek Poultney. You know, one thing that I, I keep saying and I really, really want to emphasize is that sometimes when something like this happens, the people who happen to be here right now get all the credit. And honestly, I have to acknowledge that we are standing on the shoulders of giants. And so there's been a lot of people in VLT's history, 19 years and going, um, and people who came before us who got us here. And so um, I would really graciously and um, in all sincerity like to share this moment with everybody because we didn't do this by ourselves. And so it's important that we do acknowledge that. And so sincerely, thank you to all of you who have helped in your own ways to help get us here, whether you were slinging chairs or slinging wine at those original <laughs> concerts, um, you know, whether you've sat through hours of mind-numbing board meetings. No, really, they're stimulating. Um, whether, okay, whether you've sat through hours hours of mind-numbing city council meetings. Is that better? Okay. Um, no, for, in all sincerity, you know, it, it really does take a village to accomplish these tremendous things. And I'm so honored and proud to be a part of this village. So thank you all for doing this alongside of us. Um, again, sincere thanks to Assemblymember Bennett and Senator Limon for helping us to get here. Um, and for the honor of this award and for being here today, making time for us. Now, as we look ahead, to Mariano Rancho Preserve's next phase. Ventura Land Trust will hold a series of public meetings in October, November, and December that will allow us to share details about our plans for access, trail development, land restoration, 
with the community and to gather their input as we make important decisions about the future of the preserve. Each of these meetings will, will include a Q&A session for guests to ask questions and to voice concerns. Um, flyers that list the dates and locations are available. They are in your press packets if you got one of those. If you did not get a press packet and still would like them, there's a couple more available, I hear. Um, I think Amanda mentioned we have some. Amanda, go ahead and wave. See her? And uh, we hope to see you all at those meetings. We hope to see our community members at those meetings and hear your voices. Again, on behalf of the Ventura Land Trust staff and Board of Trustees and all of our supporters, I want to thank you for joining us today and celebrating this incredible moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you.